Welcome to part five of this Football Manager 2020 experiment. Thank you for the support in the first four parts. It's gone the distance. We've reached a part five because you guys have found it really interesting. And so have I. It is intriguing. Let's recap what's happened to Chelmsford City so far then. In the first part, we gave them perfect facilities, perfect staff members. They've risen all the way to the Premier League. And in part four, we saw them win the Europa League, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup. They were runners up in the Champions League. They finished third in the Club World Championship and they finished top four in the Premier League. They have signed multiple players. They've been fantastic in the transfer market. Mr. Perfect, the manager and his staff members have been fabulous. They've become a worldwide phenomenon and are known all over the globe. But in part four, Mr. Perfect did leave the club to become manager of England, where he's won the European Championships and the International League as well. So in this part five, we're going to holiday 20 seasons in total and see what happens to Chelmsford City. So it's 2054, five years after you left me in part four. Chelmsford City are still a worldwide reputation club, four and a half stars, they're rich, and they've, they've done all right in the league by the looks of it. This is how much money they have now these days. Their facilities are back up to perfect, by the way. They've spent money on their facilities, 20 on everything. And you may have noticed just then, the capacity of Marconi Stadium has been increased to 34,558, which is fantastic. But it's still an average size Premier League stadium. Hopefully they can increase that further over the years. As you can see, last few years then, they finished fifth in the, the, the last season of part four. They then finished eighth, ninth, all the way down in 11th then eighth, and most recently, they finally finished back in a European place in sixth place. So there's, there's been a transition period for Chelsea City. They don't have Ruben Neves in charge anymore, and they've actually been through quite a few managers. If I just hide the caretakers, they had Ruben Neves until 2049, so he lasted almost two years. And then just over a year, they had Pacoca, a Brazilian, and then Costas Manolas for just under a year, the Greek manager. And at the moment, Paul Torres. You'll notice they haven't won anything. Ruben Neves managed to win a trophy, won the FA Cup in 2048. But Chelsea City have been unable to win anything since then. So this is still the same, unfortunately. However, they were runners-up in the Euro Cup in 2050, losing against Brighton. There's a bit of a rivalry there. it has been complete dominance from the England teams. Liverpool beat Brighton. Brighton then won it again. And West Brom, Brighton have won it so many times. It really is quite incredible how many times they've won the Euro Cup. I wonder if they've won the Champions League. They haven't, but there's been a lot of English dominance here as well. Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal in recent years have managed to win it. Of course, Chelsea City runners up in 2045, but that's nine years ago now. Not much has happened for them since. So they are suffering as a result of losing Mr. Perfect, but they are certainly an established Premier League team and they regularly qualify for Europe which is, of course, very good news. Let's have a look at the current squad then. A bit smaller than it used to be, actually. Don't know if there's any uh, names here that we recognise. They've got Bolognese and Heinz. Helmut Heinz, German international. I remember Bolognese. He was signed uh, back in the day from Colombia, £4.2 million. Must have Italian as his second nationality or something, I suppose. From I, I could have sworn he was Colombian, but he's playing for Italy. That's irrelevant. It doesn't really matter. The current ability of the squad then. So we've got one player with 170 current abilities. 23, potential 178. He's a Moroccan international. 51 goals in 73 games at the age of 23. Signed for, from Porto for £41.5 million this season. Big, big transfer. Heinz, 169 current ability. Dennis Pedro, Portuguese international. 160. They've got some quality players. It's a better team now than it probably was when they finished fourth. But the difference is the staff members. Now, there's a different chairman. They've got Russian owners by the looks of it. Uh, Mr. Perfect Director is still there. We've still got Mr. Perfect Youth and all those coaches are still here. They've got extended contracts, as you can see. So they've been here a long time. Mr. Perfect Director, 54. So all of the Perfect staff members are 54 years old now. They started as 19-year-olds, I think. Just shows how far into the future we are now. So that's interesting. Change of ownership, but a lot of the staff members are still there. So that is good to see. Looking at the youth teams, a few players with potential. Ronan McShane, Scott, he's come through the academy, 152 potential. And also 
An Icelandic international, 17 years old, come through the academy as well with 149 potential. And the under-18s, also a couple decent looking players. Spencer Kennedy has just come through th this very recent uh, youth intake. And Andy Clark as well, likewise, come through this youth intake. Both have over 150 potential. So the, the future is bright. They're still producing exceptional players every single season. And I imagine they're probably selling a lot of them. Still £194 million leaving the club this year. I've never seen such a high turnover for a club. Look, at, I mean, this is ridiculous. So many players coming and going every single season. It's hard for them to sustain a squad, I think, that is, well, just sustainable. I, I, I know, it's weird. Axel, who they, they bought for £45.5 million, has it's been sold for a loss to Spurs. Interesting. Now, Ollie French, remember him? Goalkeeper. Came through the Bristol City Academy, signed for a massive profit. He's mainstay in the England team. 64 caps for England these days. So they've certainly sold... A lot of the talent that they've either produced or developed over the years, or signed and tried to tried to sell for a profit. On the whole, they're they're pretty successful at doing that. They've signed a, a Belgian international this year for fifty-seven million pounds. That might be a record transfer. No, it's not. Wow, record transfer, ninety-one point nine million pounds. An Armenian international three years ago, but this is this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. So I wonder if this is a result of losing Mr. Perfect as manager. He very rarely sold players for a loss. But this is a dramatic loss and it makes no sense whatsoever because they've signed this guy for £92 million. He stayed two seasons and then sold for 27 and a half. Yes, he's old. It might be that he was really unhappy and Chelsea City just had to try and sell him. He's not amazing. I, I, I don't know. It's a... That's weird. He's not great. Current ability. Why did they sign him for so much money? That is just such a bizarre transfer. The previous season, one goal, four assists, average, average rating. I, I, that is weird. So I think mismanagement has come into play here since Mr. Perfect has gone. New owners as well. Maybe they were splashing the cash. But that that is an odd, odd transfer. You can see recent years how much money they've spent and, and sold. So they've... They have been spending more. Well, to be fair, they've still been selling more than they've been buying. A couple, three out of the last five seasons have done that. Two out of the last five, they've spent more. But I don't know. It's it's not the best position for the club, but it's healthy overall. Hopefully, they can push on from here. I think they need to find a really good manager. What's this guy like? Put Pal Torres. And management's very good. There's some good attributes there, I suppose. What's happened to Mr. Perfect? I'm sure you're asking the question. He's at PSG. He's also managed Man City as well. So he left England in 2049. Was he sacked? Let's have a look. So here he is. He resigned. And Cristiano Ronaldo took charge. He's 69 years old now, by the way. Manager of Spain, of all places. Clausen and most recently Lazaro manager. But Mr. Perfect crucially left... Moved to Man City. What has he won? I mean, can we have a look to see what he's won? Oh, this is his manager stats by the looks of it. Whoa, he signed £2.1 billion worth of players over the years. Obviously a lot for Champions at City. Man City and PSG recently, I suppose. That is so much. Did he, did he win anything at Man City? He did. He actually won the Champions League twice with them. Those two years when Man City won it. Mr. Perfect was manager. He also managed to win the Premier League in 2052 and the FA Cup twice and the Super Cup and probably the Carabao Cup, yeah, twice, two or three times as well. So he had a very successful time at Man City. He's recently become manager of PSG in the last year and probably won, yeah, he won the league quite comfortably. So he's done really, really well. He's five-star reputation, continental pro license, of course, that's what he had from the start. So as you'd expect, moving to another club and a club with even more money, he's going to be unstoppable as a manager isn't he but this is all about Chelmsford City really isn't it so yep they don't have Mr Perfect anymore they're going they're, they're okay uh, they're currently playing a 4-2-3-1 still that seems to be their go-to formation even with Mr Perfect leaving I suppose he's instilled his philosophy on the club right then let's holiday another five years and see how they're getting on this is more like it Chelmsford City have won the Premier League twice they won it twice in a row as well. Not the most recent season, but the last two seasons, they finished first. 
brilliant absolutely brilliant they finished sixth fourth first first and second they've got a new manager as you would expect and he's a regen as well so let's have a look at their manager history okay, clicking on the wrong thing here so Pal Torres left and he was sacked in fact in 2055 four years ago didn't win anything since Theo Armstrong has taken charge he has won two leagues and five cups technically I suppose the most successful manager in the club's history however mr perfect without mr perfect the club wouldn't be here but they finally found a manager that has worked 20 on man management 19 on motivating he's not mr perfect but he's pretty damn close i suppose as a manager with those two attributes anyway as you can see he's had a long manager history was he even a player i don't know maybe he's only ever been a manager but he's been a he's been a good manager especially for chelsea city five star worldwide reputation as well by the way the finances are only secure now so i don't know what's going on there i don't know why it's only secure We've got the back end sugar daddy uh still the same size stadium i think by the looks of it we just have a look at the staff still got the russians there still got mr perfect director and all those people one person i forgot to look at actually mr perfect assistant i don't think he exists anymore i think he's <laughs> this is funny uh, there's there's other perfect assistants. I I think someone commented actually. I don't know who it was, but someone did comment that once you've put a name into the game, then it's kind of implemented. So we've had Richard Perfect Assistant be born. He's not the son of Perfect Assistant, but he's just he's just there because because the name now exists. <laughs> so there's probably quite a few perfects around if we look at it. Look at all these. I'm going off topic here. We want to look at Mr. Uh, uh, at Champs of City winning the league. But look at all these perfects. You've got Cameron Perfect goalkeeper that's come through the Stevenage youth system. Ray Perfect analyst who's come through the Colchester United. I mean, you could argue these are the offspring. They, they have to be. I mean, it's not according to the game. But, you know... Perfect Assistant isn't a real name. So Mr. Perfect Assistant's gone out there and spread his seed a bit, I think. Anyway, let's have a look at the Premier League in the last five seasons. 2055, sixth place. 2056, fourth place qualifying for the Champions League. 2057, champions of England for the first time. 87 points, finishing one point above Man City. Amazing. By the way, MK Don's reaching the Premier League and winning zero games. That is hilarious. Zero games. I've never seen that before, I don't think. That is unbelievably bad. <laughs> uh, oh, I've got to laugh. Uh, and then second season in a row, champions on goal difference, finishing above Man United. And most recently, second place, five points behind Arsenal. But they have gone from strength to strength. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant from Chelmsford City. As I said, uh, a worldwide worldwide team as well. Uh, are they the top team in England? They're third. They're third on the list. There's three five-star reputation teams at the moment. Oh, England first in the world rankings. I wonder if they've won the World Cup finally. I'm going all over the place here. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. They did. They beat Italy in 2058 with Scotland finishing third. I wonder how many Chelmsford City players are in the England team. Ryan O'Connor. 28 year old with 42 caps uh, there might be a few players that have come through the chance of city academy of course anyway let's have a look at the current team then that have finished either first or second in the last three seasons current ability wise whoa this is the best player that's ever played for chance city a turkish player signed for 90 million pounds from juventus but a much better 90 million pound signing and I, I think it was theo armstrong that signed him because it was four years ago 189 current ability Wow, 45 goals. That this is this is what we needed all these years. Players scoring goals like this. Karadag, 45 goals in all competitions this season. Sabuti, 36 goals in all competitions for the Moroccan. He's now got 95 goals in 131 games for Morocco. I love getting this deep into a save and you just stumble across these insane players. Wow, I love it. Um and then you've got this guy, Perrier, who's got 174. They've got some world-class talent here. They really do. Nathan, skipped over him, a Brazilian. And uh, a Croatian, Bruno Vladic, as well, with over 170. And you've, you've got oh, they're just, just so many amazing players in this team now. It's fantastic. Most assist was Nathan, 
Bruno Vladic as well. Already had a look at him. Loads of assists for multiple players. Karadeg highest average rating and most man of the matches, as you would expect. They have produced some insane talent. They really have. Under 23s at the moment. Potential ability. This, well, this one with 180. This is the best player that Chelsea City have produced. He's 17 years old. He's already on 121 current ability with a potential of 180. He's a wonder kid. It doesn't say he's a wonder kid, but he's definitely a wonder kid with that potential. Look at his technical attribute. Dribbling 16, first touch 16, technique 16. He must be a joy to watch. Whoa. Uh, there's another one as well who's not come through their system, but 179 potential. Ben Gold. He's got 159 potential that's come through the system. Whew, good. And under 18s, there's not really anyone there at the moment. But this is some team. It really is. Uh, oh, they've gone with a 3-4-3. Controversial. But Theo Armstrong has instilled his philosophy. And he's won multiple competitions. So what else has he won? We've talked about the league. But what else has he won here? Well... He's been runners-up in the Champions League three times, which is unfortunate. So the last two Champions League finals, he's lost against Arsenal and lost against Barcelona. So let's have a quick look at that. Oh, and penalties again. Ah, oh, so harsh for Chelsea City. Previous City lost, uh, previous uh, final lost 1-0 at Wembley. So he's won the, the Premier League twice. He's won the FA Cup again, 2059. Most recent final, managed to beat Liverpool 3-1 thanks to a goal from Jean Perrier. And Karadag, our Turk. Oh, what a player. I wonder if he's World Player of the Year. He is. He's won it twice in a row whilst at Chelsea City. This is amazing. The first ever Chelsea City player to win World Player of the Year. Look at this guy, by the way, winning it so many times in a row. Arsenal player, English as well. Um, but yeah, oh, in fact, this season, first and second Sabuti as well. Second best player in the world. That is amazing. Footballer of the year. It, he didn't win that. Uh, World player of the year. He did though. As you can see there. And I imagine he's probably in World, World Team of the Year. Obviously. As you can see there. So FA Cup winners. That's good to know. Um, went a bit off topic there again. Sorry. Euro Cup. Runners up in 2004. Well, we've already seen that haven't we? Oh he's won the Carabao Cup twice more as well. 2058 against Leicester. And 2059 against Fulham, a 4 0 thrashing in the final with the goalkeeper for Fulham getting a 4.7 rating. So that's two Carabao Cups, an FA Cup, and what was the uh, what's the other things then? Oh, he's won the Super Cup in 2043. No, that's I don't know. That was that was ages ago. I must have missed this one previously. 2043 Super Cup winners against Bayern Munich. I missed that one in part four. Sorry about that. Community Shield, I suppose that counts as a cup then, I suppose. They beat Man United and Man City. So it's been a very successful five years for Chelsea City. Hopefully they can push on and win more titles and possibly win the Champions League. That would be nice. It's 2064 and Chelsea City have continued to win Premier League titles. In fact, they have won five in a row. Complete dominance. And if it wasn't for that second place in 2059, they'd have won eight in a row but they've won seven they've won seven out of the last eight so that's very very impressive unbelievable this is just theo armstrong you are a revelation but it's not just down to him it's the the building blocks the, the groundwork was done by mr perfect and his staff and of course we've still got most of the staff members here that are working at the club all these years on i've just realized it wasn't russian owners it's south african owners sorry about that i was i just saw rs and thought russia but no it was south african owners I'm sure someone's already commented saying, RSA is South Africa, not Russia. But you, you can delete your comment now because I've, I've rectified myself. So let's have a look at these Premier League titles then for Chelmsford City. So the first one, five points ahead of Liverpool, scoring 102 goals in the process. Second one, two points ahead of Arsenal. Third one, three points ahead of Man City. Then 82 points, four ahead of Liverpool. It's gradually getting worse here. And then most recently... 94 points, one ahead of Man City, only losing two games all season, which was against Liverpool and Arsenal. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable achievements. But have they won the Champions League? Yes, they have. They beat Barcelona in 2061 to finally win the world's greatest club competition. Let's go back to the final then that they won. 
2061. They won on penalties as well. We can't see it, but ah, uh, so I'm so pleased for them. So pleased that they finally won that. This is just incredible. Look at all those things. Seven Premier League titles, a Champions League title, uh, Euro Cup, Super Cup, actually runners-up as well. Uh, what a lot of the FA Cup most recently, beating Arsenal in the final, 3-1. Carabao Cup, they've won three times in total. <sighs> what, a, what a team this is. If we look at their most recent transfer history over the past five seasons... It's probably similar to what they've been spending before. If anything, it's a little bit less. 113, 111, 209. Wow, that was a big turnover. But I suppose they're not they're not needing to sell all their star players and all the academy players coming through these days. They can hang on to them, can't they? So let's have a look at the current squad then. So the best player at the club is Hong Wayne, an Englishman with eight caps and seven goals, has come through the academy is this the chap that we is, is this the guy is this the one that it is isn't it this is him so he's got on to be a an absolute star alongside this mexican who's also an absolute star signed for 113 million i think that's the record transfer for for champs of city let's just have a quick look it is record transfer oh but they have sold caradag for <laughs> A hundred and sixty million pounds to Atletico Madrid. Don't blame them for selling him for that much. That is just crazy amounts of money. Uh, he's obviously he won the World Ballon d'Or, didn't he? But then they just couldn't hang on to him. So Booty is now the the player with the most league goals. He's still here at the age of thirty three. The Moroccan, one hundred twenty goals in one hundred sixty one games for Morocco. Went off track again. Nathan's still here. Perry is still here. Fossahin is still here. Sahin is still here? Did he? Did, I don't know actually. Yeah, he is still here. He was someone that was signed in the last update. Yang He looks good. German international signed for 67 million. Oh, they've got so many quality players. It's ridiculous. This team is just unstoppable. This is, this is a, what a world class team looks like. Potential in the under 23s. There's someone currently on loan at Oldham with 158 potential. Uh, in the under 18s, there's not really anyone. I think they just fast track them to the first team with really good potential. Or sell them, I suppose. They're still selling players. But it's been a fascinating few years for Chelsea City, hasn't it? Let's have a look at their facilities. Oh, there we go. That's more like it. 61,566. Remember at the start, I allowed Marconi Stadium to be expanded to 200,000 if they wanted to. So they've got a huge amount of space to expand into, which is why they've not had to move stadiums, which is which is good. I'm glad they're still at the Marconi Stadium. That pleases me. Fine, uh, in regards to their finances, loads of money. Facilities, bit of a decline, down to 18 and 18. They've got an underwriter as the sugar daddy now, but it's still the same as South Africans, isn't it? I think so. Seven league wins, 10 cup wins for Theo Armstrong now. Oh, you can see it if you just hover over. You can see what he's won. Uh, so what's happened to Mr. Perfect? Mr. Perfect is manager of Bayern Munich. He's also been manager of Atletico Madrid, though, interestingly. That's his manager's stats. He's he spent £3.33 billion pounds now. But he's also sold £3.21 billion. Pounds, so his net spend isn't particularly high. He bought Karadag from uh, from Chelsea City when he was at Atletico Madrid. That's That's really, really interesting, actually. Giving his old clubs a load of money. Stilling one of the best players. He's won six cups and three leagues. So it's not not amazing. Oh no, that's at Bayern Munich, sorry. He's won twenty-seven cups and ten league titles. That is amazing. Lots of lots of cups and, and leagues. That's great to see. He's played one thousand seven hundred and seventy two matches with a win percentage of fifty percent. Remember at Champions City, of course, it was it was tougher to get those percentages higher, but he's had a is that a fine old career as Mr. Perfect? Right then, let's move on to 2069 and the last update in this part five. It's 2069 and I'm, I'm kind of regretting ending at this point because they've just finished seventh in the league. The first time they finished outside the top four for a long time and they actually managed to make it six league titles in a row in 2065 before finishing fourth three seasons in a row and suddenly dropping down to 7th. I'm not entirely sure why, why this has happened. But let's investigate. 
And I'm going to end it here, this part, this part five. If you really want a part six, then hit that like button. Let's say 300 likes and I will do a part six. Some, some of you might think this is a good, good place to end it. I don't know. But if, if there's 300 likes on this, this part five, then I'll do a part six. It might not be for a while, but I'll holiday another. I'll try and holiday until a point where Chelsea City have done well. I can just end it on a high because I think it they do, they do deserve to end on a high. But if you feel this this is the right place to end it, then let me know. Uh, but yeah, this this is just I said I'd do twenty seasons. I've done twenty seasons. It's two thousand sixty nine. They've just finished seventh, but they're still a worldwide reputation team. Maybe it's just one blip of a season. Who knows? Just one of those things. They do have a different manager. That might be the reason. If we just get rid of the, the caretakers, they've been through a few managers. So he he left Theo Armstrong. He left to become manager of Arsenal, which is kind of a rival team at the top of the table. Benkovic took charge and won two cups, but retired, unfortunately. Lee Davies took over and was sacked. And most recently, Ben Peters has come in. He's, he's, he's good at certain things, but he's actually really, he's an interim manager. So they've not actually hired a proper manager yet. Interim manager, is that different to caretaker manager then? Did they, did, I suppose they gave him a short-term contract because he's really a coach. He's not a man manager, that's for sure, as you can see there. So it's interesting times for Chelmsford City. They've had a very, very successful few years. We'll just have a look at the, the recent leagues. So this was their last league win. Three ahead of, was that their last? Yeah, three ahead of Man City. And then after that point, Fourth all of a sudden, 79 points. And that Theo Armstrong leaving, he's such a legend. He really was a fantastic manager because without him, they finished fourth. It wasn't disastrous, only four points off top spot to be fair. Then suddenly 72 points and this is when they're starting to fall behind the pack. And then fourth for a third season in a row, long way behind Champions Men City. And suddenly seventh this year, below Fulham on goal difference. 65 points have dropped off a cliff all of a sudden but they're still in a very very healthy position financially they are rich super rich lots of money they've got excellent facilities still they've got a big stadium they're getting good crowds i presume at the stadium let's have a look opening game of the season against man city lost 3-0 but 61 and a half thousand people turned up they might have won other things, though. Let's have a look to see if they've managed to win other competitions. So, yes, they have. 2065, they won the Champions League. Theo Armstrong was still here, I think. They beat Man City in the final, but they haven't won it since then. They haven't featured in the final since then, unfortunately. But that's impressive. They've won eight Premier League titles in a row. Third place in the Club World Championship twice now. FA Cup winners three times. European Sup Cup Super Cup winners twice uh, Euro Cup once, Carabao Cup they've managed to win five times they've won twice in recent years against Man City and Liverpool and the Community Shield six times so they've won plenty of competitions it's been a very successful uh, experiment and if we end it here we could say Chelsea City have done really really well they've got some more affiliated clubs now they've got Huddersfield from the Championship as an affiliate club and Bristol City these are their facilities Marconi Stadium still 61,500-seater. Legends of the club, Mr. Perfect, as you'd expect. But also, where, where's where's Theo? Theo's only an icon. What is going on there? He's won so many things with them. That's ridiculous. Other players, uh, or pit personnel, Karadag, 35 years old now, still at Atletico Madrid. He's a legend. Uh, Nathan, who's still at Chelsea City after all these years, £95 million. He has been a brilliant servant for the club. A Brazilian legend as well, as well as well as being a Champ City manager uh, legend, and Escobedo, a Mexican who was signed for 113 million pounds. The record transfer is also a club legend. You've got all these others as well on the uh, icons. This Sabuti, most league goals, of course, ended up playing for Dynamo Kiev in the end. Uh, Hlong Wayne, the uh, Englishman who came through the academy, is still here. Still, only a club icon. 39 goals in 56 games for England. Uh, Jeff King is, is the, the one of the managers of Chelmsford City way back. And I don't mean on this save, of course. Way back. Luke Cameron's there. He's retired at the age of 36 in the end. 
Stuart Nicholson, can't click on him. There's loads we can't click on. John per Perrier, who's still here at the club as well. Oh, it's brilliant. Vinnie O'Brien, don't remember him, to be honest. 22 and a half million they spent on him, and he is a favourite personnel, apparently. And Ivan Diaz, also recently sold. Huge <laughs> loss, but he obviously played for Chelsea City for many years, and he was only sold when he was 34, 35, so that's understandable. The amount of money they've spent recently then, so... Yeah, those, they, that's net. Zero pounds. Impressive. Not much the previous year. This might be the other problem. They've not spent as much money recently. 145 million four seasons ago. Let's have a look at the current squad then. So the best player in the team is Long Wayne. He's still here, of course. Really good player. Fossahin, still here. Another English international. In fact, who's in, who's in the England team? Currently managed by a regen. French region. Uh, Champs of City are third on this list, by the way, so that's good. They, they probably were first at one point. This is the current squad. If I can click on the right button. So they are playing Hong, Hong Wayne up front by the looks of it. Uh, Fusa Hayden in the team. Ben Gold, another Champs of City player in the team. Uh, those are the three Champs of City lads in the English team. Let's go back then. So yeah, the, the squad isn't as strong as it was when they were winning multiple league titles. So that's the problem. They need to they need to sign some some real beasts, don't they? They need to get back to their former glory somehow. I'm not sure how. Every team has phases, doesn't it? It's a shame. It's a real shame that we're ending on 2069 at this point. Kind of feel like it should have ended it on a high, but that's the way it goes, doesn't it? It's been an incredible, incredible. 60, 50 years, 50 years for Chelmsford City to come all this way, hasn't it? And, and they're still winning things and they're still producing magnificent players if we have a look. Got quite a few players with over 150 potential. And if they hang on to them, they've got some good, solid Premier League players there. But they do need to try and get some more 170 current ability players to really push on, I suppose. Because they've only got two now, have they? Yeah, two with 170 or more. So they do need to have some slightly better players, I think. I think all the staff members are still here, by the way. Mr. Perfect Direct. So they're all 69 years old. Oh, it's a new chairman. The South Africans have sold the club. So that might be an impact. There was a, a real golden age during the South, South African period, wasn't there? That could be the reason why they've suddenly dropped off. That's interesting. Well, there we go. Oh, what's does do they have a do they even have sugar daddy? They don't. So they're reliant on just sustaining themselves, I suppose. Which is quite easy to do with all the T V money. But when they had a sugar daddy, they obviously spent more money, bought some really top quality players, and now they're no longer doing that. Anyway, if this is the end of the experiment, I hope we have enjoyed it. But I am willing to do a sixth part if you guys want me to. I want Chumps and City to return to their former glory because look at this. They dominated for a long time, didn't they? And that was a lot of fun to see considering where they came from. They almost won the league nine seasons in a row. They won it eight out of nine seasons before Man City have returned to their former glory. Which has been a while since Man City were dominant actually looking at it. I'm tempted to bring Mr Perfect back if we do a part six. Should I bring Mr. Perfect back? I think I should. I think that could be fun. So yes, if there is going to be a part six, then remember to hit that like button. 300 likes. Did I say 300? I'm saying 300 now anyway. 300 likes and we'll do a part six. I will move Mr. Perfect back, I think. That would be fun. And we will simulate another 20 seasons, I suppose and see what happens. But if there is a part six, then it will be a few days, possibly a couple weeks until part six is uploaded. But until next time, enjoy FM20, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon.